Let's look at a pretty standard election. That's the last one. Uh, the 2012 election was between the sitting president, Barack Obama, 44th president of the United States, a Democrat, and Governor Mitt Romney, former governor of Massachusetts, a Republican. Now, President Obama, Governor Romney, uh, had a fairly competitive election, competitive debates, so on and so forth. But when one looks at the election night results, we can see that despite it being a rather tight election, popular vote-wise, President Obama won an, a, a sizable electoral, electoral majority. If you look at the states that President Obama won to get 332 electoral college votes. Remember, he only needed 270. He won big states like California, Pennsylvania, New York, Florida, Ohio, Illinois. Even though Governor Romney won more states, many of the states that he won, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, um, Nebraska, have very small electoral college votes. Hence, more states doesn't necessarily always translate into more of a victory. President Obama's electoral college votes add up to 332, 332. Therefore, he won a second term as president. We look at the overall popular vote, those a bit more narrow. Um, rounding up, President Obama had about 66 million popular votes, whereas Governor Romney had 60 million, which is pretty tight. President Obama had 51% of the vote. Governor Romney had 47%. So the popular vote was tighter than the Electoral College would show. That's because with the Electoral College, it's winner take all. One of the classic examples of how the Electoral College is stronger than the popular vote <laughs> is the 2000 election. The 2000 election was between Democrat Al Gore, who was the Vice President of the United States from 1992 to 2000, and Governor George W. Bush son of the 41st president, George Bush, um, and also the governor of Texas. Um, president Bush, I'm sorry, well, soon to be President Bush, and Vice President Gore had a very tight election. Al Gore won the popular vote by almost 500,000 votes. Al Gore had 50,999,897 votes overall. George W. Bush had 50,456,002 votes. That's a difference of 543,895 Americans. 543,895 Americans more <laughs> voted for Al Gore to be president. He won the popular vote. Yet we never talk of the presidency of Al Gore because he lost the election. How is that? Take a look at the Electoral College map from the year 2000. As you can see, there's a lot of red on that screen. Governor Bush won a lot of states. However, many of the states... He won narrowly. He won Ohio narrowly. He won Florida narrowly. In fact, he won the state of Florida by almost 500 votes. An entire state, 500 votes. That is about 0.00001% of the overall vote. The states that Al Gore won with big electoral college votes like California, Illinois, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. He won in huge landslides. So he had a huge portion of the popular vote in those states. So even though Al Gore won in big states by big margins, 
He lost in smaller states by small margins, meaning that he still was getting a good amount of popular votes. But as we know, the Electoral College is winner take all. So even though Florida was divided by about 500 votes, George W. Bush got all 25 Electoral College votes. Even though Ohio was, the difference was in the thousands, George W. Bush got all 21 Electoral College votes. So it is, we're going to see as, as, as the election night goes on and on, even though George W. Bush had less Americans vote for him, he was able to secure more Electoral College votes with that winner-take-all system. So despite having 543,000 less votes than Al Gore, George W. Bush won the presidency. Um, if you read up on that election more, you'll find out it's one of the most contentious elections in history. The uh, Florida took numerous recounts uh, before it was finally called to George W. Bush. We didn't know who was going to be the president of the United States until December, mid-December of that year. Now, not every election is one where the popular vote is less than the uh, electoral college vote. Often, when we see that there's a landslide, popular vote-wise, there's also a landslide electoral college-wise. Let's take a look at, lastly, at the 1980 election. The 1980 election was between uh, Walter Mondale, also known as Fritz Mondale. Uh, he was the former vice president of the United States under Jimmy Carter from 1976 to 1980. And Ronald Reagan. Ooh, I just realized I made a mistake. 